Learning scripting on Roblox can be difficult, so I decided to ask some of the best Roblox developers out there what they did when learning to script, and whether they have any tips for upcoming developers. As well as this, I recently did a survey where I asked 100 developers about how they learned to script, and I'll show you the results later on in the video. Firstly, we're going to hear from Boat Bomber. He's a former Roblox intern, and he was on the winning team of the RDC Game Jam 2020. Like most people, I got started by analyzing and tinkering with free models and open source code. Once I had a little bit of knowledge, I would just try making things. I'd pick something I wanted to make and get started. And I got stuck a lot. And when I did, I would Google the specific error message, mathematical question, API, or, or whatever. And by doing so, I wouldn't just be blindly following a tutorial on how to do this, how to do that. I was learning the guts and on what made these programs tick and understanding it so that I would be able to use that knowledge in other applications. And as time went on, I got stuck less and less often until I crossed the line of knowing how to script. Something I want to pick up on which Boat Bomber spoke about is that it's important to learn the code instead of just learning how to make something, since learning the code and understanding what elements of code do will allow you to create things yourself and will make you able to visualise projects in your head. Lots of people struggle to plan scripts out because they don't fully understand the code basics, and they don't know where or why elements of code should be used. Picking apart free models and open sourced code helps you understand why a developer has chosen to use code in their scripts, because you get to see the decisions that they've made, and this is a great way to learn. If you're ever struggling to understand where you'd use some code, always ask for help, whether it's on the forums or just by asking a friend, because you'll be able to see a practical example of where this code is used. So thanks to Boat Bomber for sharing his story. You can check out his game Lua Learning on Roblox. It's a great resource for learning to script. I'll leave a link in the description. Next, we're going to hear from Wesley. He created Roblox Death Run, which has nearly 300 million visits and has been on Roblox since 2008. He's also been a Roblox intern. So over to you. When I started out on Roblox, the first game that I wanted to make was a hide and seek game. So I had played a few that were popular at the time. And I thought it would be quite fun to make my own twist, make my own map, and be able to build it myself. But at the time, I had no clue how to script it. So the first step that I did is I went out looking for things that I could learn from. So I went to the free models, I found minigame scripts, hide and seek scripts, anything that I thought would be remotely similar to what I was looking for. Now with this, it was not my intention to just take a script and use that as it was. I actually wanted to learn from it and essentially piece together my own game script from all of these other scripts that I found. So the first step was to actually start reading through every single script, line by line, word by word, uh, make sure that I understand every single thing that it did. And my number one resource for that was the Roblox Wiki, which nowadays is the developer hub. And essentially just looking through the API reference for every single thing that I did not understand. Um, it was a very tedious process, but while doing that, I actually got quite a good hang of what every single bit of code did. And I think later that week, I was able to take the best pieces of code from each script. I understood how to tie up all the variables together. And in the next week, I had a working hide and seek game. It wasn't perfect, but it worked. Now, the reason why I wanted to tell you that story is because I still use this same approach today. Whenever I want to do something that I haven't yet done, or if I want to work with a new API, or want to do anything that I haven't had experience with, the first thing that I do is I'll look up a practical example of someone else who has done it to see how they implemented it, to see the types of decisions that they made when working with that feature or mechanic. And with that approach, you get a lot more experience and you really start to understand a feature or a mechanic or a new API a lot better than if you were to just read through the API documentation. By looking at what someone else has done with a piece of code or a certain mechanic, you already get a good idea of how this can be used in a game or in a script or wherever you want to apply it. And if you're watching Alvin's videos, you're already applying this on a daily basis. Because you're seeing someone else work with the code, you're seeing someone else work with the feature. Um, and then after you've seen it, you go and try it yourself. Already having seen what it can do, just really sets you up for success. And really helps you to understand how this can benefit your own work in your own games. 
And at that point, if you come across a piece of code or a snippet that you don't know how to work with, you at least have a better idea of what you want that snippet to do. So when you go look it up on the developer hub or the API reference, it's a lot easier to understand it because you have a much bigger sense of context. So that's how I started 10 years ago, and it's still the same approach that I use today. And I hope it also helps you to get a much better understanding of your code as you're writing it, even when you're working with things you haven't worked with before. Thanks, Wesley. You can find Wesley on Twitter at WesleyRBLX. I'll leave a link in the description. Did you notice that he said he started making Roblox games for fun? Back then, there was no DevX. The only incentive was to earn Robux to buy hats and items. And so most developers were just creating games as a hobby. My advice to you would be to treat Roblox development as a hobby as you get started and make small projects which you find fun. Because learning scripting shouldn't be a chore, it should be something you enjoy. Okay, so earlier in the video I told you about a survey that I did of 100 Roblox developers. So I asked them what they did when learning to script and what the best resource they used was. 65% of the developers used free models to pick apart code inside and 58% actively made small projects to help build on their knowledge. Many of the respondents mentioned how they used tutorials and the Roblox wiki, which is now called the Dev Hub, to gain initial basic knowledge and once they had that knowledge they began to start making basic games and they'd go online to ask for help whenever they got stuck. A good quote which I'd like to mention is that your first game may be awful but you can't make your 50th game without making your first. So as bad as that first one might be you can always improve on what you didn't do well at in the future. Finally, let's hear from Anne, also known as Mizta, a former Roblox Accelerator intern and developer of My Droplets. She also recently began posting Roblox development videos on her YouTube channel, and I'll leave a link to that in the description if you want to check it out. When you have an idea that you want to script, try to break it down into the smallest bits and pieces as much as you can, and look up how to do those individual things. If you're trying to do something math related, try to figure out what exactly you're trying to calculate. Look up if anybody else has already solved it. That helps for one thing. If you want to make a menu, look up how to manipulate a button on Roblox. Look up how to use user input service, that kind of stuff. Just look up small bits and pieces of the whole idea that you have and Try to figure out how to do those pieces, whether it's taking code from other people and putting it into your game and manipulating it, or starting completely from scratch and just looking up each individual piece that you want to make. Sometimes it can be hard because searching for keywords can be difficult. But usually, even today, I just look up the exact thing that I want. If nothing is coming up for the specific idea that you want, you want to break it down further and simplify it uh, so that you can explain it better to the internet. Eventually, you will find some bit of code that in the end you can manipulate and figure out how it works and script exactly what you want. And in that sense, you're going to learn a lot from that experience and grow as a programmer. So it's really helpful to just look up any kind of small ideas that you have. Sometimes people have like, like if you've heard of uh, Inktober, there's things for scripters too. I think it's called like a coder advent calendar. Um, you can look up that kind of stuff if you're lacking in ideas and kind of try your best to try these challenges and make these things that people want you to make. That can also be pretty fun. So that's another way for you to get small projects. But really the goal here is just to apply what you learn as much as you can through different small projects that you create. That's how I personally was able to get really far as a programmer because I had ideas that I actually wanted to implement and I was passionate about them. And so it was really motivating for me to actually like see my work coming to life and happening. So yeah, just try to apply everything you can as often as you can. Another great reason why you should create smaller projects, as Anne said, is so you can see the progress that you're making, which will help you to stay motivated in the long term. Personally, when I was a beginner scripter, I tried to make huge games, which even now would take me months to do since they're so complex, and it would just totally knock my motivation as I soon realised it was too much for me to do back then. A big thanks to Boat Bomber, Wesley and Mizda for featuring in the video. All of the links to their social channels will be in the description. 
Smash a like on the video as you're leaving if you enjoyed it. Subscribe for more content by clicking on my logo on the screen now. Anne's logo is also on screen, so click that to subscribe to her. And check out my old video where I played my old Roblox games by clicking on the thumbnail. Thanks for watching. I'll see you next time.